Hello and welcome to Pep Talk with me, Mr Pepperell. Today I'm wondering, why is it that my coffee goes cold? So, by the end of this video you should know what are evaporation and condensation, how does evaporation cause cooling, and what factors affect the rate of evaporation and condensation. So, you know that after a rain shower there are going to be puddles dotted about the place, but soon the sun will come out and the puddle will start to dry up and disappear and this is all down to the process of evaporation okay water molecules in the surface of the puddle down here have escaped from the puddle surface into the air and been carried away by the breeze but just how does this happen well it's all to do with kinetic energy again as the sun shines down on the surface of the puddle the particles are gaining kinetic energy from the sun's infrared radiation okay so these particles are starting to gain energy and the more energy they gain the more they start to vibrate and eventually the particles have enough energy that they're moving fast enough to escape from the surface of the puddle and become not a liquid but a gas so what we get is a change in state as a result of the heat there okay and remember here the whole puddle doesn't need to be boiling you don't need to get the whole puddle boiling uh, to get these particles changing into a gas it's just the individual particles on the surface need enough energy to escape so although the particles down here aren't anywhere near um, in possession of enough energy to escape the puddle our particle which was on the surface has absorbed all the infrared radiation and has escaped the puddle as a gas so that is how and why evaporation can take place now a number of things can affect the rate at which the evaporation occurs okay as the particles can only escape from the puddle surface the larger the surface area of the puddle the higher the rate of evaporation okay now obviously as well if the puddle is heated to a higher temperature if more infrared radiation falls on it the particles gain more energy they're going to escape more readily okay so the second thing that can affect our rate of evaporation is the temperature the higher the temperature the higher the rate of evaporation finally there's one more thing if there's a breeze across the puddle the water molecules are carried away and there's less chance of them condensing back into the puddle losing their energy and going back into their liquid state so the final thing that is going to affect our um, evaporation is if there's an increased airflow across the surface this increases the rate of evaporation so i just mentioned the term condensing or condensation there and that's a change in state from a gas back into a liquid now hopefully it should start to tick over in your brain why this might happen think about why evaporation happens it should become a bit obvious why condensation happens and you've actually seen this in action when you've ever had a shower before if you've observed the water vapor or the steam and what happens to it so we know for these particles to exist in, exist in their gaseous state they need a lot of energy they need to be very energetic they need to be moving around very fast they've got a lot of kinetic energy but when some of these fast moving particles come in contact with the cold mirror okay what happens is that some of that energy is transferred to the cooler mirror remember that heat energy is also always transferred from areas of relatively high to relatively low temperature now because this particle our um, water particle here has lost some of its energy that's getting it moving faster some of that energy has gone into the mirror it starts to move more slowly it's lost some of its kinetic energy and they're no longer moving fast enough to be a gas and this is when a change in state occurs and what we get is the gas what we call condenses to form a liquid so we get a gas cooling down to form a liquid so as with evaporation there are a couple of things that can affect the rate at which condensation occurs okay firstly if you had a giant mirror in your bathroom there's obviously more surface area for the steam to condense onto so the first thing we can say is increasing surface area increases rate of condensation secondly as the energy always flows from hot to cold the colder your mirror is in the first place the more energy can be transferred to it before your mirror warms up so the second thing we can say is reducing the surface temperature increases the rate of condensation steam is much more likely to condense or will condense much quicker onto a cold mirror than it will a mirror that's already at room temperature so that's everything we need to know about heat energy transfer by evaporation and condensation any problems with that don't hesitate to tweet me at mr underscore pepperell or email me and i'll get back to you asap Thanks for stopping by.